Okay, so this is one of the this is one of the very most important concepts in all of chemistry and is really sort of what allowed the way that we're thinking about this concept really sort of allowed us as chemists in the early 1800s to embrace the idea that matter was something that we could not see, but was also something that we could quantify. Okay, so the mole concept, the mole, um, it was discovered or developed, um, thought of by this dude named Amadeo Avogadro. In 1811 is really when he like first published his work. Um, Amadeo Avogadro was an Italian, and he was un, like of the nobility, so he had money. He had like private means. He was a lawyer, like by trade, and even though he was very successful, he just like really had a passion for thinking about science, and so he quit his job, job, and like uh, built himself his own laboratory in his home and studied the stuff and really is considered by some to be the father of modern chemistry because his thinking is what enabled a lot of other scientists to embrace <coughs> this way of thinking of like how, how we conceptualize how we quantify matter because it is so small okay so what is the mole concept it is a way of thinking about a quantity of a substance. So the mole is a finite amount or number of any kind of substance. So most of the time when we're talking about a mole, we're talking about very, very small things, things we cannot see, like atoms and molecules and ions. But you could have a mole of anything. In fact, a mole of marbles would cover the entire contiguous United States, so that's like not Alaska, not Hawaii like all of the United States that are all together. 70 miles high. The entire America, not Alaska, not Hawaii, 70 miles into the oh. air. So because it's a definite quantity, we, it has like its own number. It has a numerical value. And so we can use it as that number. So just to compare something that has like um, a smaller quantity, we'll say, or a smaller amount, um, one mole of water molecules equals only 18 milliliters. So if I were to put one mole of water molecules into this graduated cylinder right here, I would only fill it up like this much. So this is the same number of water molecules, <coughs> God bless you, as if you had the same number of marbles and it covered all of America 70 miles high. Like, that's almost like incomprehensible. We can't almost even think about how big of a number of marbles that must be. But it's such a small amount of water. Last year, I think, Elliot um, and ladies, um, last year, Mr. Dermis's class, you guys did an experiment where you calculated like a mole of different um, substances and you saw how many grams were equal to that mole for different um, elements. And so it's... Like a mole is a very tangible amount of molecules, not so much for marbles. So the number that we use for the mole 
is referred to as Avogadro's number. And it has a finite, like a fixed value, it's a constant. It's equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So that means that it would be 6.022 with 20 zeros after it. So just a really big number, right? So that much of a thing equals one mole. Yeah, it's a kind of a big number. Okay, so um, this is something that you should memorize, but because we're going to be using this a bunch, like especially on our next homework assignment, and you're going to have to use this number in math, let's put it as a memory in our calculators so that we don't have to type it in all the time. Okay, so do you know how to store... Um, so if you have a graphing calculator, do you know how to store values in a, as a letter? No. Okay, good. I will teach you how to do this thing. Okay, so turn your device on and then type in 6.022. Sorry, you that? Now, whenever you're typing in times 10 to a thing, you need to use second comma. So you're going to press the second key. On many of your calculators, I think it's blue. You're going to use the comma key, which is right above the number 7. And that will put up on your screen like this little capital E. And then type in 23. And then do you see on the bottom left corner, right above the on button, the STO key with a little arrow? That's the button that will store things like as a memory. So press that key, and then you're going to press the alpha key. On my calculator, it's green. Wait, where's the stone? Um, right above the on button. Press alpha, and then we want, to, we want this to be A, I think, because it's Avogadro's number, so I think it would make sense if we called it A on our calculator. So the A is also the math key, which is right underneath alpha. And then hit enter. Now, anytime you press alpha math, that number should pop up. Oh, it didn't online. I didn't do this. And so you don't need to type this in anymore. You can just press alpha math and hit enter, and you can see that the number should come up on your calculator. If you don't have this kind of calculator, if you have um, one of the other Texas Instrument ones that like don't light up, you know, like the, the regular scientific ones, um, you can put a memory in there. I just can't remember. I would have to look up how to do that. I can help you with that in a bit. Yes, Carter? Can I come in and charge my calculator because I don't want my um, Somebody stole my charging cord. So I don't even have one either. Does anybody else have a charging cord? I know Hunter, you had a charging cord. Did, do you still have it? I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> the last time I had to charge my calculator, I had to borrow Hunter's. Um, I'll order some. I'll order some and charge them to school. What is it? It has a funky, that's probably it, Elliot. Yeah, if you've got your computer there, maybe Carter, can, you can use it right now. Okay, so. Let's take a look at the units for this number. Now that we know the number and we have it plugged into our calculator, let's talk about units. Remember I said that it's a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. It's that number of anything. And so that kind of makes this a little bit difficult to understand because the unit is changing depending on what we're describing. So for us, it could either be molecules or ions or atoms. It just, it changes based on how we are, like what the context is, I guess. And that is always equal to one mole of that same substance. 
Okay, so now here is just a little bit of like a housekeeping thing. We, and I don't know why, we abbreviate the word mole as M-O-L. But get this, we abbreviate the word molecule, M-O-L-E dot. Why get that? Because otherwise it's the word mole, which we don't use because we use M-O-L. It's, it's very complicated, and I, I, I wish it wasn't this way, but here we are. So, there is, like, so look at this number, 10 to the 20, like, times 10 to the 23, right? Um, there's an international holiday that celebrates the mole concept. It's called International Mole Day, and it's celebrated every year on October 23rd. Oh, yeah, so it's funny for us. Yeah, 20, yep. What, 23? On October 23rd, because oh, 10, uh, 23. Because he loves chemistry so much? Yeah, yep. Looks yep. Um, hey, hey, hey. Um, the, 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 like, little, the little, like, chemistry mascot is a mole, the animal. That's why I've got my little friend here with his, like, little lab coat. On his test tube and his safety goggles, he's a mole, but like he's a pretty cute mole. Have you guys ever seen a mole like actually like the animal? Go, uh, can you guys Google Google it? Grab your take your phones out and Google it. They are they're absolutely hideous. Okay, let's see. Turn off. Turn off. Face up front. Please. Oh. Face forward. What is that? What? Stop looking at me. It's like a big rat. Yes, it makes this one about myself. Yeah. 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 Okay, so these these are like little baby moles. They look they don't look horrible. But like look at their their face thing. And like the they're, they're like claws. They're not they're not cute. Um, Logan Schultz, um, we were just talking about this last class, and he was saying that he once petted a mole at some place, and he said they're very soft, and I said, that's sick. Can they see? No. I don't think that they, like, because they live underground, and that's why, like, why they have, like, have the, like, the big, like, mouth thing, like, that's what they use to, like, feel around. They, so, like, eat dirt, and it's pretty weird. It's pretty weird. Dominic, don't turn her out. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about how we can use this with some math. We can we can use the mole concept to convert units, just like we have been doing on that homework that you just covered into. And so this is why this is the beginning of why I made you do all of those unit conversions because this now will be it's just the beginning of this now will be more difficult than what we did on last homework. Oh, Alright, ladies and gentlemen, you are being too noisy. Alright, let's talk about this. So, on this flow chart, I have made you like a little cheat sheet for how to do all of these unit conversions. And so, if you know where, you, where you're starting, that's like your given amount from your homework, from your problem, you can just go back through following the arrows to wherever you need to go. As long as you know where you're starting and where you're ending, just follow the instructions on here and you should be good to go. You're going to use your same um, process, your dimensional analysis, where you're crossing off your units, the, the numerator unit becomes the denominator, you will use the whole thing. Okay, so let me give you an example of how something like this would work. So let's say that we're given a number of grams of carbon, and we're asked to figure out 
the number of moles of that substance. Okay, so we're going to start this the same way that we did on last homework. So 42.1 grams of carbon over one. And so now what unit should be in the bottom of my next fraction? Grams of carbon. So now how do we get, well, like, what do we do next? Your formula sheet will tell you, if you're starting in grams and you're needing to go to moles of that substance, um, just follow what the arrow tells you. It says to divide by the formula weight. So do we remember how to calculate formula weight? You should, we had just had a test on this not super long ago. So you're going to look on the periodic table and add all of the bits of the compound up. That's its formula, that's its weight, formula weight. So what's the weight of carbon? Oh, you might need your periodic table. It's 12.01, but that's all there is to it. Like there's no other bit of the compound. What was the unit? Do you remember for formula weight? Yes. Oh, I remember that. Okay, so now this is where we're going to like put that concept together with this. Huh. So because we're dividing by the formula weight, I'm going to put 12.01 on the bottom of this fraction. What will go on top? Well, if that, I'm saying it is. If I'm saying that I have 12.01 grams per mole, that's per one mole. And so I will use one mole as my numerator. I should write one mole of carbon. If you don't, you will get yourself in a bad habit. And when we start using the back side of that dark green sheet, you'll be cooked. So don't just do as I do. Don't look at the back sheet quite yet. It means nothing to you today. Next week it will. Okay, so now we're just going to do some math here. You know, I don't think I have ever done a pop quiz. Until next week. <laughs> All right, so I get 3.50. What's my unit? It's moles of carbon. How did I know that? Well, my grams are going to cancel out because of dimensional analysis, and so whatever uh, unit I'm left with is the unit I'm left with. What did you say? Nothing. Oh. It's a math thing. It is a math thing. Oh, shoot. Okay. I didn't know that that, that did a thing. Okay. All right. Um, so now let's do something a little bit more complicated. Yay. <laughs> Let's say that we have 3.21 moles of calcium carbonate, and we need to figure out the number of molecules of calcium carbonate. All right, so set your problem up the way that you have been doing. We went through hell yesterday together. What kind of hell did you guys have to go to through? We ran yesterday. Yeah, we jogged yesterday. You jogged at, at, at practice? I had to push we had us, yeah, the JVs go inside and then we had to like walk. Why? No, 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 no. Mid practice. Um, oh, you guys did. The kids were walking around. So or no, no one was going into the drill, so then he just said we can run around the field. Oh. It wasn't bad, but we just ran. Yikes. Yeah, that's that's a bad day. Okay, so now we can use our flow chart to help us. What circle are we starting in? Uh, it's this one. Would it be the top right? Top right, that's correct, because you're starting in the number of moles. And what circle are we going to? We're going to go to the left middle. What is the F that we started 
Yeah. Formula weight. Good question. Formula weight is FW. Okay, so I'm go I'm starting here and I need to go here. So what does my arrow tell me to do? It says to multiply by Avogadro's number. And that's 6.002. 6.02. Two. Two. Times 10 to the 23. Oh, damn nation. Wait, so why do we type that in our calculator? Just put plus 3. Alpha A. Oh, that. Oh, but you don't have your calculator because Logan has your calculator. Yeah. I don't own one. Um, you can just use mine. What you know about a roll? All right, so now let's practice using our calculators so that we know what we're doing. Wait, why didn't you go down to add? Because I don't need to. We're trying to find a molecule. Okay, so I'm just going to type in 3.21 times alpha math. Press enter. Enter. That'll give me 6.1, 8.2234. Repeat it. 1.93. What? No. I got 1.93. No. That's what I'm saying. Times 10 to the 24. I tried to do it in my And then what's your unit here? Uh, M O L G E double. Or M O L E dot. M O L E dot. Yep. Nice. How do I know that? Well, Carter said so. These two things canceled out, so this is the only unit I'm left with. So this would be my answer. Do I have correct number of significant figures here? Yep. Uh, yeah. I do. Yep, so this would be good. All right, let's do another one. All right, we're going to start with 213 grams of sodium chloride, and we are going to convert that into atoms, question mark, atoms of sodium. Okay, so where are we starting on the flow chart? Uh, grams. Grams. We're starting in grams, so we're in the top left. And we want to get to atoms, which is bottom left. Which is bottom left. So we're going to have to go do, do, do. We have to divide by our formula weight, which would be, would that be the weight of NaCl? It would be the weight of NaCl. So, we're, so like Dominic just said, we're going to divide by the weight of NaCl. How would we find formula weight of NaCl? Uh, looking at the periodic table. Sodium is 22.99. I've been doing this for pretty many years. That's crazy. I thought you were only like 25. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, Jake is 16. So if I was only 25, that means I was a nine-year-old mother. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so what do we have here? 58.44. That goes on the bottom. <laughs> Why do I know that it goes on the bottom? Well, there are two ways that I know this. Firstly, Guys, zip it. Firstly, my flowchart told me to divide by formula weight. So that's why it's down here. But also, remember from dimensional analysis, we have to keep our units together. If I know that 58.44 grams is equal to one mole, that's like the point of formula weight, I have to keep 58.44 together with grams. So that's why they are together on the bottom of the next fraction. So then what goes on top? of NACL. Carter, jump down. Take notes. All right, is this what we're looking for? No. no. Sad days. So we need to go one more step further. Um, according to my thing, 
Well, actually, we've got to do two more steps. It says class and right now. <laughs> that is not according to my thing. Oh, I'm a Okay, so it says, now if I want to go from moles to molecules, I need to multiply by Avogadro's number. So, one mole of NaCl goes on the bottom. How do I know? This unit has to go on the bottom of the next fraction. 6.022 times 10 to the 23, that's molecules. We're going to alpha that. Now, is molecules what we're looking for? No. Sad days. All right, I'm going to erase this here. So one more step. My flow chart tells me to go from moles to molecules to atoms. I need to multiply by the number of atoms of the element in the molecule. All right, so in one molecule, how many atoms of sodium are there? How many NAs are there? Two. One of each. One. There's only one. There's one mole of sodium. How do I know? I just looked at the formula. If there was a different number than one, I would multiply by that. But oh. I don't need to. Does that mean that I don't need to show this work, though? No. You still have to have this, even though your math doesn't change. Okay, so I want you to do this math on your calculator to make sure that we're doing everything correctly. 213 times alpha A divided by 58.44. 219 times 10 to the 24. 2.19. Yep, that's what I got. Now, what's your unit? Well, all of my units are going to cancel except moles of sodium. So that's my unit. Moles. What, what happened to the CO? Mm, yeah, it dipped. Because we're only looking at the sodium. Yes, Hunter? Why only sodium? Why does that and it get crossed out of it? Which one? The one. Yeah. This why does this one get canceled out? Um, because this cancels out here. Oh. All right. All right. So what do you know? Do you do you notice what I did? Like my units are not the same as what I'm looking for. <laughs> so here's another like tricky thing about the mole concept. For every compound that you have, um, let's talk, take a look at um, sodium oxide, for example. For every compound that you have, you can say that you have a mole of your compound, and then you have an equivalent number of moles of each of the elements. So let me explain what I mean by that. If I have one mole of Na2O, it means that I have... How many sodiums in this compound? Two. It means I have two moles of Na. If I have one mole of this compound, how many moles of oxygen do I have? One. Only one. And so we can break our compounds down by and look at them and determine how many moles of each of these things we have. This can be a little bit tricky because it means that we're using the same words to describe different work. But it's all part of the mole concept. Okay, so what I think I want to do now is hand out the homework. Let's do some examples of this because it's going to, this is one of those things that you're not good at it until you are good at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But once you get good at it, all will be well. What are we in? Are we in Who's your I'm in I'm in Oh, I know. I know.
October 23rd, you know what that is? That is mold day. It sure is. I will bring you a treat. I will bring you a treat. All right. This, we're just going to start from the top, and we're going to just do these examples. Um, if you lock in and pay attention, you'll start getting this. If you don't lock in and you're, or you're on your phone while I'm going through these examples, you might understand it right now, but you're going to leave from here, and you're not going to know what you're doing. So bear with me. <laughs> All right, we're starting out with this problem. Now, um, I think that these take me a little bit like more room on my page. And so if I was you, I would start like on the very far margin with my work. Because like just there's more to write down. Okay, so always start by writing what you know. over one. Okay, so I can use my flow chart to help me. And it looks like I'm starting with moles and I want to end with grams. So I'm starting here and I want to end here. My flow chart tells me to multiply now by the formula weight. Okay, so I need to calculate a formula weight. How would I do that? Well, carbon is 12.01, and there's only one of it. How many oxygens, though, are there? So you have to take into account that there are those two oxygens. So 2 times 16 is 32, so 44.01. Does that go on the top of the fraction or on the bottom? It goes on the top. Um, two reasons. It tells me that I need to multiply by the formula weight. Oh, I don't know how that happened. I don't know how that... I'm trying another way of trying to use this damn board for taking notes. I would really just like to get this, get rid of this and use my whiteboard and get like a monthly subscription from Amazon. Subscribe and save for the expo markers. But here we are. Okay, so how do I know that it needs to go on the top? Well, it tells me on my flow chart, but also I know that 44.01 grams is equal to one mole. And I know from working on dimensional analysis on last homework that this unit needs to be on the bottom of the next fraction. I also know that the number has to stay with its unit. So that's why one mole goes on the bottom and 44.01 goes on top. Now, is gram what I'm looking for? Yeah. It is. So we can just do our math and call it a day. Oh. Wait, why do we call it a day? Yeah. Um, because when we do this math and we end with our, like our unit here is grams of carbon dioxide, which is what we're oh. looking for. Yes, that's what I got too. Um, I think that this is a scientific notation kind of problem. Um, so how many significant figures should we have? Uh, four. four. Good. 
I round it up because after the three is a nine. And now that is times 10 to the one, two, three, four, five. And now, what's my unit? Uh, G How was that? Is that okay? Okay, this is one of the most important things for you to have learned in this class. Converting from grams to moles and moles to grams. One of the most important things. If you plan on taking AP Chem next year, this is something that you're just going to need to like inherently know how to do. Is it in the real world or no? No, it's not in the real world, but how much of this class is actually in the real world? I mean, no. None. Yeah, none. I mean, some of it is, I guess. You could like think about how much of the world is chemistry, like all of it. All right, I want you to attempt to get B started. Gents, sit down. Get B started on your own, and then I will show you what to do next. So you should be able to do this at least, right? If you don't know anything else, you should be able to do this. Um, why did I add it? Because I should have had it when I wrote my question. Yes, you may need your periodic tables now. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Do you, did you guys lost your periodic tables? No. Sorry, clearly seems kind of lost. He doesn't. Um, uh, I have a secret to tell you. If you have this calculator, you also have a periodic table. Um, so if you press the apps key, um, you have to have the light up ones though. If you have the older ones that don't light up, they don't have this. Um, but if you do have this, you can press the apps key, and then it's number eight. And if you press any button, this whole periodic table will come up. And then you can select any um, element you want, and it'll give you all this information. Do they hear our class? Mm -hmm. they, yes, they hear all of your nonsense. Ooh. Hayden and John and Chase. Oh. For formula weight, yep. Okay, so grams of H2O needs to go on the bottom. What did you calculate for a formula weight? 18.02. 18 How do I know that? Well, I've got two H's. They're at 1.01 each. And then oxygen is 16. So 18.02. What unit goes on top of this fraction? One mole. One mole of H2O. Is that what we're looking for? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what did you get for an answer? All right, so what's your unit? <coughs> um, uh, M -O -L -H -O. Good. And then how many significant figures should you have? Three. You should have only three. So you could have really rounded 10.3 would be sufficient. Why not one? Why not one? Um, because 185 has three significant figures. Is it because it's in our uh, problem? We can't use like the one from the 
Uh, this, these are exact numbers, so they have infinite significance. Oh. All right, how did we do on that? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs medium? Thumbs medium. Okay, that's positive. That's positive. That's positive. Um, if you feel like you are understanding this, go work at your own pace. If you're feeling like you need me, then work at my pace. <laughs> Let's just do C then. C says you start with 8.6 times 10 to the 23 mole, which really needs molecules of CO, and we need to figure out how many moles of carbon dioxide, or excuse me, carbon monoxide that is. All right, so start by writing what you know. And now, do, what does your flow chart tell you to do? Divide, Divide by... The yes. Now, your unit for that will be molecules of carbon monoxide. What goes on the top of this fraction? One mole. M-O-L. All right, so now, typing this in, you have to be careful. You may not. Now, I've already seen a couple of you doing this, and I've told you not to do this, so thou shalt not use second law. Oh, boy, Cameron, you okay back there, buddy? I was taking shots in the dark that entire question. I got the whole thing in. Oh, crazy Jesus. I'm reward myself with that. It's true. <laughs> okay, so... This part of your number, you may not use second log to type in. Don't do it. It does not mean the same to you as it does to your calculator. Sometimes you'll get the right answer, but that's only luck. So don't do it. You will instead type in this, 8.6, and then you will press the second key, which is the blue one, and then you will press the comma key which is right above seven. I cannot tell you how many times I'm going to tell you this and you are still going to use the damn anti-log, anti, um, yes, anti-log. It's not a thing you know how to use. Second log. The 10 to the X. Where it says 10 to the X on your calculator, that to your calculator means something different than it means to you. So use Tell the calculator to do the thing you want it to do. And then type in 23. Now, because we typed in our Avogadro's number, we can just press divide and then the alpha button, math, and hit enter. <clears throat> what do you get for an answer? What's your unit? 1.4 moles. Uh, and it should be just one. And it should just be 1.4. Good. Because you need to have only two significant figures. How do I know that? 8.6 is my original number. Only two significant Yes, Hunter. See that? No. 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 That doesn't mean the same thing. Not to your calculator, it doesn't. All right. To do, to do powers of 10, you have to use the E key. Otherwise, your calculator is doing a different math than you want it to. Sometimes it will work out, but not every time. Okay. How did this go? Bad. 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 Oh, no. Okay, we'll, do, we'll keep doing more. All right, D is a multi-step one, so you're not going to be able to get away with just one bracket. So we're starting with grams of H2SO4, and now we need to figure out the number of moles of just hydrogen. Why just hydrogen? Because that's what my problem asks. Oh. 
because that's what I want you to give me. Okay, so let's just get her started. All right, so we can do this. Now, if we look at our green sheet, we should be able to tell what to do next. Um, we're starting with grams, which is upper left, and then we're going all the way down to bottom right. So just oh. follow the arrows and do what it tells you. All right, so divide by formula weight. Yep, we're gonna need to calculate formula for this, friend. Uh, we've got two H's, that's two times 1.01. .01. How many sulfurs do we have in this compound? Uh, one. And then how many oxygens? Four. Four. This computer's so lazy. I get 98.08. Does that go on the top or the bottom of this next fraction? It goes on the top. Look at your bean sheet again. It goes on the bottom. How do we know that? Um, because it it does say on your formula sheet or on your your green sheet, it does say divide by formula weight. Okay, what goes on the top of this fraction? One mole. One mole of? The whole thing. Of the whole thing. Okay, so what do we do now? What do we do now? Go. Okay, yes, you're right. It says to multiply by the number of atoms of that element in the molecule. So how many al um, atoms of H are there in the molecule? Two. All right, so two mole H. What goes on the bottom? Well, from dimensional analysis, I know it has to be this unit. And does that make sense to me? Yes, it does, because in one mole of that compound, I have two moles of hydrogen, just like I have over on the board. Is mole of hydrogen what I'm looking for? Yeah. Okay, so I can stop. So now do your math. I want to make sure that you're getting the same thing as me. I got point zero. One, three, two, five. What should be my unit? Mole H. Good job, Carter. And then how many significant figures should I have? Two. I should only two. have two. So two. Where, what number do I put the line over? Uh, the three. The three. Well, why the three? Oh, because the zero is significant. Those zeros are not significant. Yep. You could put this in scientific notation if you wanted to, but I don't think you have to. I choose not to if I don't have to. What's the label? Mole of H. All right, I'm going to give you the rest of the time to take as time as your own. We will work a little bit more on this on next day. So that's not until Monday. You don't have school on Friday. Thank you. I don't have school next Friday either. I know, isn't that nice?